between the chalks here, aren't they? Uh, they got about a hundred good sized chalks there uh, sitting on the ledge. There are no good chalks, or at least there weren't until recently. I have to do a lecture. <laughs> a little piece of chalk. You know, there's a box over there which uh, about 200 pieces of chalk that are this size. And, um, <clears throat> I took to bringing chalk from my office. So I'll just finish up uh, what uh, we were saying um, uh, on Friday. Um, you know, as far as I know, I'm uh, the only case that uh, the uh, the uh, Sato Tate conjecture. In fact, Sato Tate conjecture is in fact only stated, as I uh, understand it, for the group G equals S L two, and that's the only case where it's been proved. Um, even though one can sort of guess what it ought to say in general, given what we had about the vial integration formula. So, um, so let me just, for completeness, let me just say then uh, the statement of the Sato Tate conjecture that has been proved, what does it actually say explicitly? So, so this will, we'll just recall the vial integration formula. Um, so this is F is, um, um, so, uh, we've got, we've got a group G hat. We have a maximal compact subgroup K hat in it. We've got a maximal torus T hat. Maybe do it over here. We've got a, uh, um, complex group G hat. We have a maximal compact subgroup of G hat. This would be like um, uh, GLNC or uh, uh, GLNC, and this would be like UNC. And then we got a maximal torus T hat there, and we got a maximal torus U hat uh, in there. This is a complex torus. Uh, this is a, an honest to goodness compact torus sitting in there. And um, the uh, vial integration formula, we just recall, it tells us how to integrate a function um, Well, we're just stating the version of it. There's various versions that apply to more general uh, complex groups or real groups, but we're just stating the version of it that applies to a compact group. So F is a um, continuous function, let's say, on um, a compact group, then you can uh, write the Haar measure on k hat, you can decompose it. So it's just like good old fashioned advanced calculus with the Jacobian determinant, um, <clears throat> souped up uh, um, using various uh, technical uh, advances that uh, would apply to, say, a general um, Lie group or compact Lie group, let's say. So it's the, uh, got to divide out by the order of the vial group. That's the vial group of K hat in U hat. Got to divide by, by the order of the vial group you have to integrate uh, over u hat that's the compact torus 
Uh, and then there is a Jacobian determinant. Uh, the usual thing, it's just like advanced calculus where you take the Jacobian matrix and you take its determinant when you're trying to break up uh, an integral over a big space into an integral over product spaces. Um, and then you have the integral over u hat k hat of um, uh, the integral of f of x to the minus one u x dx and du. And this, of course, is the decomposition that you have for a compact group, a unitary group. Uh, you can break that up into a product of two um, um, spaces. Um, you can write it as an integral over conjugacy classes, each of which meet um, a comp uh, the maximal torus. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking conjugacy classes apart from modulo the action of the vial group. And then over here, we're integrating um, over each of those conjugacy classes. But the way we uh, represent uh, the conjugacy class is uh, to take, uh, uh, there's u, that's an element in the torus. And then we're, we have an element x in k hat, and we're conjugating this element. So it really is, uh, uh, right, writing uh, k hat as a product of two spaces, compact torus, and this um, uh, integral over the uh, conjugacy class, a rep um, uh, given element u in the torus. And there's a just like there's a change of variables formula um, coming from the determinant of a Jacobian matrix. And as I think I mentioned last time, there's several decompositions for any group. You have locally compact, say, Lie group or algebraic group or a Delic group. You um, have several decompositions. This is the solid decomposition, the polar decomposition, and this is the conjugacy class decomposition. And uh, this, this is what's relevant for getting the exact formula for the Sato Tate. Uh, conjecture uh, in the special only special case that it's been done. Um, notice, incidentally, numbers matter here. So uh, you could say this is the Haar measure on k hat, the one uh, that gives you uh, total volume one. But it wouldn't really matter. You could take any uh, Haar measure um, on k hat, and then that whatever you take there, you got to take there. So that balances. And any Haar measure on u hat as uh, a torus, uh, you could of course take the one that assigns total volume of the torus one, but it doesn't matter. You could take any Haar measure because you're dividing out by u the hat there, and then you're uh, putting it in there. So whatever dependence, whatever Haar measure you take on either in either of those cases, it doesn't matter. They balance out. Anyway, that's the that's the vial integration formula, and. Um, so uh, just to finish things up, let's just check and see what that gives you. Um, um, so for example, um, um, the original uh, Sato they must have done it independently. I don't think they worked together, but the original Sato Tate conjecture, which is, I mean, probably people now have um, described generalizations of what this conjecture should be for other groups. But the original one was just for uh, G equals GL2, and this is what was proved. by uh, Clozel it was a many it was a many collaborator uh, effort um, Harris Michael Harris uh, Richard Taylor and various others and it is for the case 
uh, G equals SL2. Um, pi is uh, cuspidal. Um, automorphic representation of GA. Um, which is primitive. So that means, uh, uh, I guess it's not supposed to be the image of um, under functoriality of uh, a two dimension, a finite two dimensional, excuse me, not supposed to be the image under functoriality of a two dimensional representation of the Galois group. And it's not supposed to be the CM type. Um, in other words, um, not a functorial, uh, not functorial image. Um, um, of, uh, from the abelian um, algebraic group. G prime, um, uh, the restriction of um, scalars from E to Q of GL1. It occurs to me as I write this out, I'm not sure that I um, was considering the difference between SL2 and GL2, but uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, um, um, this would be, I guess, <clears throat> that would be uh, the analog of the image of, th there's uh, going to be a subgroup um, of the dual group of this, um, which uh, uh, comes from complex multiplication, and I do not want pi to be that image, I want pi to be primitive. I, don't want it to be the functorial image of anything. Um, except, so, um, um, so this would be for um, quadratic extension um, um, B over Q um, of degree two. Um, all right, you hat. Um, so uh, we've got K hat, that would be um, 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 occurs to me that I've got, I haven't, do I want um, G hat to be SL2C? Uh, maybe I do. I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure that I'm quite right in what I have written down here, but um, U hat, I want to take U hat that's supposed to be the maximal torus in K hat, and uh, U hat then would, I want it to be the set of E to the I theta, zero, zero, E to the minus I theta, um, in which zero is less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to two pi, Okay, so that is um, a maximal torus um, in uh, uh, S, um, that's a maximal torus in SU2, um, um, uh, the vial group, 
w hat is going to be z modulo 2z. Um, u hat um, um, u hat modulo w hat. Okay, so we're, li we're looking at conjugacy classes in u hat. Um, there's u hat, but the vial group is of order two. It acts by sending theta to minus theta. So um, if I want to choose a set of representatives in u hat modulo w hat, that would be the same as not this, but rather the set of u uh, equal e to the i theta, zero, zero, e to the minus i theta, in which we're going to restrict theta, um, less than or equal to theta, less than pi, because uh, the vial group of order two sends, uh, is supposed to send theta to minus theta. Um, all right, du, okay, the vial discriminant, um, pardon me, uh, that's right, that's right, I'm just looking up there at what I've got, yes, this is all, of, this is all for k hat, so I think I, uh, I think I want G hat to be SL2. Um, um, let, let me just go through this and we'll correct it as needed afterwards. So yes, yeah, thanks. Uh, DU is the determinant of one minus, there is U there, and I want to take add U the adjoint action of U um, on um, uh, the, the set of G uh, of K hat modulo T hat, excuse me, uh, K hat modulo U hat. So that is going to be the set. Um, so if I'm, if, if G hat, if K hat is um, S U, um, to the compact group, then you've got the diagonal matrices coming from U hat, and then uh, uh, this is supposed to be on uh, this, uh, I didn't write down what the, this um, Jacobian determinant is, but it is supposed to be this, uh, it's one minus this, the identity minus this, uh, in which this is to be acting um, on the complement of the diagonal matrices, namely uh, zero x y zero. There are the diagonal matrices. These are um, 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 x y uh, being. Um, Oh, I've got C here, um, number of C, um, but I've got add, add U acting on these things, um, and what is that equal to? It's each, each so, so U, there's U, it's E to the I theta, E to the minus I theta, um, on the Lie algebra, it, then it's acting on these two matrices, and add u x uh, on x. Um, we've got one minus add u acting on each of these things. And what that is equal to, that's going to be equal to one um, minus e to the two i theta. That's what one minus add u does to this thing. Uh, where um, um, u is given by that element there, e to the i theta, e to the minus i theta. 
Um, so it, uh, on uh, this thing, it's one minus e to the two i theta. And on the y, it's, um, the deter it's equal to uh, one minus e to the minus two i theta. And that is equal to two minus two cosine two theta. These two things together, they, the product is real. Um, and what it is in fact is two minus two cosine theta. And so that's equal to four uh, sine squared of theta. So what we're interested in is the distribution um, in this um, in this torus, this piece of the torus. I've taken a, a subtorus divided by dividing out by the action of the um, vial group. So um, theta is supposed to be between zero and pi, and we are counting. Um, the collection of, uh, play, uh, of um, uh, CPs, of classes CP, which all of the CPs are supposed to land in here, but we want to compute their density, excuse me, we want to compute their density. So um, what that would mean would be, if I were to take zero, not zero less than or equal to theta less than pi, but rather zero less than or equal to alpha less than beta less than uh, pi. Um, then to compute the density, um, we would be enough to understand what happens in a little sub interval. Uh, uh, an arbitrary subinterval of zero pi, and um, we would get um, this is all attached to an automorphic representation pi, and we would uh, the density if we're trying to calculate that, that would be the limit as n goes to infinity of. Um, the set of p less than or equal to n um, with uh, zero less than or equal to cp pi um, 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 I want actually would like to take alpha less than or equal to cp pi, less than um, or equal to beta. Um, I want to count those, uh, the set of all primes such that cp pi lands in this subinterval. It's an arbitrary subinterval of the interval zero pi. And so I want to count these things and I want to divide out by the set of primes less than or equal to n. The CPs, I'm taking the CPs to be in this um, interval, um, zero pi. So uh, here we've asked for the uh, CPs that are less than or equal, lie in the subinterval, and I want to divide out, uh, divide that out by the number of p's simply uh, that are less than or equal to n. That is to say, the number of p's, all, all primes uh, for which cp, uh, we've, as we've set it up, lies between zero and uh, pi. And what's that going to be equal to? By the vial integration formula. So there's some constants, and I'm gonna write those down first. There's one over a half, there's one over two pi, and there is two. And uh, then I'm going to have the integral from alpha to beta. 
So the density of these things, um, it's not uh, the uh, perspective densities, uh, as, as we've noted, it's not one, but rather it's uh, given by this. And so this is equal to four sine squared theta, d theta, and that's equal to two over pi, um, the integral from alpha to beta of sine squared theta, d theta. And so what are these constants here? Um, this is, that's the volume. That's the volume of um, um, U hat, U hat Satoris. Um, but we're taking representatives in that, well, first of all, uh, we've got one half. Uh, that's in the vial integration formula. That is equal to W hat. This is the number of elements in the vial group to the minus one. Vial groups of order two. So that's what this is. This is the volume of U hat. And this too is here because we um, um, are taking uh, the elements not in the whole torus, but rather in this subtorus zero pi. Not, we're not taking zero two pi, we're taking zero pi. Uh, this is the fundamental domain. Fundamental domain um, for W hat. in zero two pi. That's what we've done by, uh, uh, effectively done by taking alpha and beta in this um, to interval zero pi rather than zero two pi. So um, I really should multiply by two and um, these twos cancel, I get one over two pi times four, so I get two over pi sine squared theta d theta. And that's this, this is what they proved. So this, this limit equals this. So I, I was a little careless when I was preparing this. Um, it looks like I'm taking, I want to take um, G hat to be SL2. Um, SL2C. If, I, if you have any comments, uh, I didn't notice this when I was reviewing my notes. Um, so pi uh, would be, I'm, I'm not sure whether they took GL2 um, or whether they took SL2 or whether they took PGL2. Um, but I think I want pi to be a cuspidal automorphic representation of this, not of CM type. And, um, I'm thinking of this integral as an integral um, over K, which is um, the maximal compact subgroup of this, um, which is SU2. Um, K is SU2. Does that make sense? Does that, or have I... Um, um, I anyway, anyway, I will... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at what I wrote down, but this is this 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 is what they proved. They proved that this distribution is equal to uh, 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 
alpha over the integral from alpha to beta of sine to sine squared theta divided by this normalizing factor. So, um, I haven't read their proof. Um, Ram Murthy has a nice um, exposition of it. And, uh, but Ram Murthy's article, and I, I've glanced at their proof, and they both say uh, they did a lot of work to get around the fact that you don't have functoriality. So I rather imagine um, you're assuming Ramanujan's conjecture, um, which um, has been proved um, by Deline for um, um, uh, automorphic forms um, for GL2. Um, so that's, they, they, they had that, and, um, but they still, Deline did not use functoriality to prove func the Ramanujan conjecture. So Deline has proved the, Deline proved the Ramanujan conjecture for uh, automorphic form, for holomorphic automorphic forms um, for GL2. And, uh, um, uh, that doesn't include mass forms, but they don't need it for mass forms. And um, so that would be a starting point for Hara, for Taylor and company. And, um, but then I think, so, so in other words, Deline didn't use explicitly functoriality, good idea, good, because we don't know functoriality uh, for GL2, but I rather imagine that what, um, this would come out uh, um, more easily if you were to assume functoriality for the mapping for the uh, representation row from uh, SL2 or GL2, and I'm sorry for the uh, sloppiness here that I haven't decided, but, it, but um, uh, I rather imagine that uh, this, this proof um, of Harris and Taylor um, would come out much more easily if you assumed functoriality from GL2 to GLN. There's an n-dimensional representation of GL2. Um, um, you, uh, you, there's one irreducible representation of GL2 um, of degree n for every n, and so uh, it's irre irreducible, so uh, functoriality um, would apply to those things, and I think that, uh, that they jumped through various hoops, did Taylor and company, to get this. So here's a project. Our slash question. You guys uh, don't have much spare time, but if you wanted to think about something, it would be, I think, pretty useful to think about how, you, how this could be proved if you had functoriality. Langlands, I think, was certainly aware of that. As I say, there was one sentence at the end of his article um, um, saying, once we have Ramanujan's conjecture, then we can ask about the distribution of these conjugacy classes, um, say within the uh, maximal torus where they will lie. And uh, he had said he had no idea what it would be, but he must have had, he must have known this density argument that would, um, I assume, I don't know when the Sato Tate conjecture was made, but in any case, uh, uh, prove this formula. Um, for either SL2 um, or more generally GS split group 
um, and pi as above, a general group, if you could prove it for SL2, uh, presumably the similar arguments would work in general with the assumption of functoriality. And I, I would imagine, I haven't thought about it, but I would imagine it's an argument similar to the argument that uh, we used functoriality to uh, Langland's argument for using functoriality to prove Ramanujan's conjecture. Okay, so there's a project. And here's another one, um, which I state advisedly. Um, Okay, so you've got an asymptotic formula for the distribution of these conjugacy classes in this uh, torus. Um, what about the error term? It's just a limit. All we've got there is a limit. Um, can we say anything? About the error term. Is there some um, small exponential such that the um, that this, this that this formula for those um, distribution of those conjugacy classes um, is correct not just as a limit but is there uh, is there uh, uh, an exponential error term uh, that uh, uh, gives you a measure of the error? Um, I think not actually, because this is rather close uh, to the Riemann hypothesis. This is kind of like the Riemann hypothesis for the um, automorphic L functions rather than the Riemann zeta function. The Riemann zeta function is a sum over uh, T of, uh, um, or a sum over N of one over N to the minus S. This, uh, this the L function attached to one of these representations would be a sum over n, not of n to the minus s, but uh, the product of these or the whatever what the, the coefficients that which are naturally determined by the cp uh, pi. So uh, we call it cn of pi. So the, there would be coefficients of the zeta function um, built out of these cp pi's. It'd be easier to state actually as more of a product, but let's not uh, worry about that. Um, so um, you've got the Riemann zeta function for which the zeta, the Riemann hypothesis is stated. And then you have these things uh, for which the Riemann hypothesis, presumably, we, we I think do expect it. And so this is kind of like the difference of the two. This is uh, sort of the, how these things this is a, um, I'm being very vague, but this, uh, what I'm asking here is, um, uh, uh, maybe what you would end up if you thought hard about the Riemann hypothesis for the Riemann zeta function and the analog of the Riemann zeta function, uh, excuse me, the analog of the Riemann hypothesis for the L functions attached uh, to, um, um, I. And so uh, it's, uh, you know, I think, I mean, <laughs> one can hope that, uh, I've, I've said this before, you have the Riemann zeta function. You have L functions, Dir uh, uh, Dedekind zeta functions, or Dirichlet L functions. And now you have all of these L functions to this huge, uh, um, um, huge collection of L functions attached to uh, automorphic forms on a general group and for a general representation of their dual group. And I think people would say they might uh, call me up short on this, but I think everybody would agree that they, um, the Riemann zeta, the Riemann hypothesis is uh, likely to hold for all of these things. 
And so the question is, if you know functoriality, <clears throat> I'm real, this is just speculative, but if you know functoriality, that would be enough to establish analytic continuation and functional equation for these other um, zeta, uh, for these other L functions. And is there, uh, if you happen to know that for all of these L functions, um, can you um, um, get any, say anything about the Riemann hypothesis by considering them all together? So this, uh, this question, it, see, it seems to me, I haven't, uh, this is quite vague, but this question would seem to be sort of something related to uh, the difference between the Riemann zeta function and the L function attached to this representation pi of uh, maybe, maybe I should be saying for GL2, maybe that's probably what I should be dealing with here. But in any case, um, uh, it's certainly worth considering for people that have nothing else to do. And um, uh, I mean, what, what, nobody has a strategy for using the Langlands program as far as I know, or anything else, or proving the Riemann hypothesis, but um, it's um, certainly not beyond the bounds of, in fact, I would say it's probably you're going to have to deal with all of these things together, but um, we don't know, we don't know what you would need, but the, the point about the Riemann hypothesis is it gives bounds for the number of primes uh, less than or equal to n. And so we were asking, I guess we're sort of asking here, uh, can you get similar bounds for not the number of primes, not for the coefficients of the L function attached to pi and the two dimensional representation of its L group, but maybe something that's uh, perhaps the difference between the two of them in some sense when you're asking for an error term there. But error terms, that's exactly what the Riemann hypothesis would give you for any L function. So, so probably not. I guess I would say, can you say anything about this? I think not, but it's something to bear in mind. Um, um, okay, so those were the four uh, applications, if I uh, am allowed to call this an application of functoriality um, that Langland's only devoted one sentence to. Um, there's two more things that um, we could ask about that were not mentioned at all in Langland's article. So two more uh, recent, and, and let's be honest, they're gonna be harder. Questions? Um, conjectures? related to funk. So uh, I think it's fair to um, suggest that they should be related to functoriality. Um, so I, we's, I have been numbering these uh, um, applications of functoriality in Langland's paper. There were four of them, if I am allowed to count the Sato Tate conjecture as the fourth of them. So let's, uh, let's add these add numbers to these things too. Um, a general classification. Um, um, of automorphic representations. Well, what do, we, what do we mean by that? That's asking, it's not well uh, formulated uh, really, but so what I mean by that would be um, a construction um, of the putative uh, proposed automorphic Galois group. Uh, 
LF. So this is something I would like to um, get to. Um, um, I'm actually giving uh, a, a colloquy, a, a number theory seminar next next Wednesday, not not this Wednesday, next Wednesday. So I will try to say a little bit about that there, but I also hope to get to this in more detail here. Um, so this, what you want is you've got um, uh, this non-abelian class field theory uh, constructs Galois um, groups by rep, um, cal it associates um, to representations of the Galois group. It associates automorphic representations of GLN and dimensional representations of the Galois group are associated to uh, n dimensional to Automorph uh, n dimensional representations of the Galois group are associated to certain, certain very specific automorphic representations, cuspidal automorphic representations, if the original representations of the Galois group are, ir are irreducible, cuspidal automorphic representations of GLN. Very sparse set within the larger class of automorphic representations of GLN. So, what we're asking here is a group that it would be an extension of the Galois group um, whose re n-dimensional representations would give all automorphic representations of GLN. Um, this would be a, a locally compact group. It would actually be, this wasn't Langland's proposal, Kotwitz suggested that it ought to be of the following form, that it ought to be an extension of the um, global VE group. And this is meant to be the global Galois group. Sorry for my writing, I'm in a corner here, not very legible. So, um, uh, so I have a conjecture that's actually been around for a long time, but this hasn't really been um, acted upon uh, very much by people. Um, but for a, a precise construction of what this group ought to be. And so that's what I would like to discuss. And, um, Finally, so, so um, I, this, the, the conjectured form of this thing is, is rather closely related to functoriality. And it seems to me, unless I have overlooked something or um, um, not accounted for everything, it seems to me that functoriality plus something else, plus epsilon, you could say, um, a little bit beyond functoriality or a suitable proof of functoriality, uh, perhaps using, well, using so-called the, the trace formula in uh, this more modern strategy that's known as beyond endoscopy, a uh, suitable proof of functoriality, I think, ought to give a formula for this as well. And then finally, the reciprocity. which would be um, a generalization, which, so if this was, is supposed to classify automorphic representations, um, then this would be uh, supposed to classify motives. And so as such, it would be a generalization of the Shimura Tenyama Bay conjecture. And for um, arbitrary motives, not just elliptic curves, but arbitrary motives. And of course, that would require uh, 
the definition of a motive. Uh, it's a, a joke that people say, you know, we don't even have, okay, we're going to talk about motive, so we don't even have a definition of a motive. Uh, actually, Tate, in Tate's article, in Tate, there's an article of Tate called Algebraic Number Preliminaries in the Corvallis Conference. And he, so he, he, he went all out and he started talking about these algebraic preliminaries, but he was talked about them in terms of motives. And some guy, some, it was a probably, perhaps was a, this was meant for graduate students, a graduate student uh, perhaps in the audience was getting more and more exasperated uh, with Tate's, uh, uh, it was pretty sophisticated lecture that he gave and he got more and more exasperated and finally he put up his hand and he said, what's the definition of a motive? And Tate said, that's the one question you're not allowed to ask because there was no definition of motive and there still is not a definition of motive, but we certainly expect that they're, they exist. But the formal definition um, of Grotendieck is, has not been resolved. Uh, there have been substitutes for it, I think, by Deline and people that uh, could amount to a definition of certainly uh, pure motives. But in any case, um, this would be the construction of um, motivic Galois group. And this would actually be not a locally compact group, but rather a pro-algebraic group. So the motivic Galois group GF, I'm going to write script G, perhaps to suggest that it's not a locally compact group like the Vey group and the Galois group and the proposed um, monomorphic Galois group. So let me write script G uh, for, rather than L, L is supposed to stand for Langlands and G is supposed to stand for Grotendieck, but script G in meaning a pro-algebraic group. Uh, but in any case, and um, a natural homomorphism. from L of F. If you have a locally compact group, you can certainly uh, consider uh, homomorphisms of that into a complex algebraic group. Um, so this at first glance is, is a, a pro complex pro-algebraic group. And so it's a little like, and indeed it's sort of constructed that way, it would be constructed that way. It's a little bit like the dual group and uh, these are locally compact groups. You can talk about a map from a locally compact group into a complex group, which is what we'd be asking for there. So a homomorphism of this into GF. And so um, this, <clears throat> this would class, this would, well, this would include a lot and uh, it would include, a, I guess, a definition of motives, but it would also, a motive would be uh, supposed to be a representation of this group, just a finite dimensional algebraic representation of this complex group. Uh, and so for any such thing, you would be, you would, it would hand you uh, um, a representation, an n-dimensional representation of this locally compact group. And that's what is supposed to give you automorphic representations of GLN. So a motive would then give rise to an automorphic representation of GLN. And so uh, one can, the um, proposed uh, construction of this group uh, leads to a proposed construction of this group as well. Um, so, um, I'll do as much as I can of that. But um, I think I really do, uh, this, this would be built on, um, even though this wasn't in Langland's um, Bachner article, uh, classification of local representations very definitely was, um, even though it's not in its modern form. And so they, these, this, these groups and their local versions and the re uh, relation of their local versions to um, 
representations of local groups, that was very definitely implicit in Langland's article. And so I think I would like to go through, I'll try not to take too long, go through uh, the, set, the seven questions, um, which um, are, uh, have to do with this group, these groups and at least their local uh, role in the classification, their, their role in the local classification of representations. So I will do that next. Question or 